The trapezium sits at the base of the first metacarpal and is the most lateral carpal bone in the distal roll. It articulates with four bones, the first and second metacarpals distally, the scaphoid proximally, and the trapezoid medially. In this video, we're going to use a right hand specimen and a left individual bone. The trapezium metacarpal, or TM joint, is formed by the articulation between the distal aspect of the trapezium and the base of the first metacarpal. This joint has a wide range of motion, with muscular activity in planes that is out of phase with the other fingers. The TM joint is capable of flexion extension, abduction adduction, and rotational movements which when combined give it the ability of circumduction and opposition. There are several factors that facilitate this large degree of dexterity. Here we have the articular surface of the trapezium and the articular surface at the base of the first metacarpal. The articular surfaces are described as being interlocking, twisted, and having a concavo convex shape. Another factor that permits this large range of motion is that these two articular surfaces have a different radius of curvature. Also, the diameter at the base of the first metacarpal is about 33% larger than the trapezium. Although these factors provide a wide range of motion, they inherently decrease the stability of the joint. Therefore, we'll review some of the anatomical structures that contribute to the stability of the first TM joint. The keys to TM joint function and stability are the beak of the first metacarpal and the trapezium recess into which the beak inserts, as well as the ligaments. These factors permit screw home torque rotation in the final phase of opposition, which creates stability for power pinch and grasp. As few as three and as many as 16 ligaments have been identified in the TM joint. However, most anatomists will say there are three primary ligaments that provide structural integrity to the joint. The dorsal ligament complex, the volar beak ligament, and the intermetacarpal ligament. The dorsal ligament complex arises from the tubercle of the trapezium and is the largest, strongest, and the most important ligament of the TM joint. The volar beak ligament, also known as the anterior oblique or palmar beak ligament, is a capsular structure that inserts into the recess on the volar aspect of the trapezium. The trapezium recess is a pivot point of the TM joint, and this is where the volar beak of the thumb metacarpal inserts during the final phase of opposition. The center of rotation of the TM joint is at its volar ulnar corner. The palmar surface contains a well-defined tubercle, or ridge, with a deep groove. The two lips of the ridge provide attachment for the flexor right inoculum, also known as the transverse carpal ligament, while the tendon of flexor carpi radialis muscle passes through the groove. This palmar ridge also provides origin for several intrinsic muscles of the hand, including the flexor pollicis brevis, the abductor pollicis brevis, and the opponent's pollicis. The dorsal surface is larger than the palmar surface and contains a groove for the radial artery as well as vascular foramina for the entry of blood vessels. The lateral surface is non-articular and provides attachment for the radial collateral ligament. The proximal surface contains a facet for the scaphoid which is concave and four-sided. Medial to this facet is a facet for the trapezoid which is also slightly concave. The facet for the scaphoid may be continuous with the facet for the trapezoid. However, in some people, there is a distinct interarticular ridge that separates these two facets. At the distal medial aspect of the trapezium, there is a small quadrilateral shaped articular facet for the base of the second metacarpal. The trapezoid facet is located between the scaphoid facet and the facet for the base of the second metacarpal. Vascular foramina are found on the dorsal, palmar, and radial surfaces. Blood supply comes from the radial artery and branches of the dorsal and palmar carpal arch. The trapezium has an extraosseous and an intraosseous blood supply. The trapezium is similar to the pisiform and the triquetrium in that it contains two or more areas where blood supply enters and once these vessels enter the bone, they anastomose. So a combination of extraosseous 
and intraosseous blood supply interruption is needed for an AVN or an avascular necrosis of the trapezium to occur. Therefore, after a fracture, an AVN of the trapezium is actually not very common. One method for side determination is to find the palmar surface, which if you recall has this groove, have that pointing up and away from you, and place the bone on a flat surface. So again, here's the groove that was on the palmar aspect, but instead of keeping it down, you're going to have it pointing up towards you, and also away from you. So it's up and away from us. Next, if you recall, you have the scaphoid and the trapezoid facets, which are both concave. The side to which these point will tell you what bone specimen you have. So in this case, we have this bone on a flat surface. You have the groove pointing up and away from us. And your scaphoid and your trapezoid facets are pointing left. Therefore, this will be a left bone specimen.